Inside the Leonard Skinner plane crash, the terrifying last minutes. On October 20th, 1977, the music world was shaken by the tragic news of the Leonard Skinner plane crash in Mississippi, an event that claimed the lives of several members of the band and their entourage. This catastrophe not only snuffed out the burgeoning careers of one of rock's most promising acts, but also left a permanent scar on the survivors and the rock music landscape. The incident, occurring at the height of Leonard Skinner's fame, underscores the unpredictable and often precarious nature of rock and roll touring life, bringing to light the fragility of life and the indomitable spirit of those affected. This article explores the circumstances leading up to the crash, starting with Leonard Skinner's rise to fame and the decision to embark on a tour that would end in tragedy. Further sections delve into the condition of the plane, early concerns raised by the crew and band members, alarming signs during the flight, and the chaos in the cockpit moments before the crash. The aftermath of the disaster, including rescue efforts, injuries, casualties, and the enduring legacy of the tragedy, will also be examined to provide a comprehensive overview of the impact of the Leonard Skinner plane crash and its significance in the annals of rock history. Leonard Skinner, an iconic American rock band, was officially formed in 1966 and later named after a gym teacher, Leonard Skinner, who had a memorable impact on the band's guitarist, Gary Rossington. The band's journey to fame began in earnest with their distinctive blend of blues, country, and rock music, which quickly set them apart in the competitive music scene. The band's breakthrough came with their debut album in 1973, which featured the hit Free Bird. This track not only soared in popularity, reaching number 19 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, but also helped the album sell over a million copies. Following this, Leonard Skinner released Second Helping in 1974, which included the anthem Sweet Home Alabama. This song reached number 8 on the charts and solidified the band's place in rock history. The album's success was mirrored by subsequent releases, with Nothing Fancy and Gimme Back My Bullets achieving platinum and gold status, respectively. By 1977, their album Street Survivors peaked at number five on the charts, just days before the tragic plane crash. The band's rise was also fueled by their dynamic live performances. In 1973, they gained significant exposure while opening for The Who on the U.S. Quadrophenia Tour. This exposure was pivotal, helping to expand their fan base significantly. Their performance prowess was undeniable, and by 1977, they embarked on the Tour of the Survivors, which, despite its ominous name, showcased the band's resilience and commitment to their music. The tour included a memorable performance at the Greenville Memorial Auditorium in South Carolina, just a day before their fateful flight to Louisiana. Leonard Skinner's journey to fame was marked by their innovative musical style and their ability to connect with fans through powerful lyrics and memorable live performances. Their albums and tours not only carved a niche for them in the rock and roll world, but also left an indelible mark on the genre, influencing many artists across various music spectrums. The aircraft involved in the tragic Leonard Skinner plane crash was a Convair CV-240, a model initially designed to replace the Douglas DC-3s for American Airlines. This model was the first pressurized, twin-engined airliner, which debuted with American Airlines on February 29, 1948. Despite its historical significance, including its use in John F. Kennedy's 1960 presidential campaign, the plane had developed a reputation for reliability concerns over the years. The Convair CV-240 was a groundbreaking airliner in its time, designed to offer more comfort and economic operation compared to its predecessors. With a cruising speed of 265 miles per hour and a range of 1,000 miles, it was tailored for shorter routes. This aircraft was a product of an evolution from the unpressurized Model 110 to the pressurized Model 240 to meet airline demands for higher altitude and more comfortable travel. 
However, by the time Leonard Skinner was touring, the CV-240 was showing its age. Notably, the aircraft had been previously inspected and rejected by Aerosmith's flight crew for their tour, citing concerns about the plane and crew's standards. Aerosmith's assistant chief of flight operations observed instances of unprofessional behavior by the pilots, which included consuming alcohol during their duties. Furthermore, the CV-240 was known for several safety issues, such as a tendency to stall at low speeds and susceptibility to engine failures. These handling characteristics were particularly problematic during critical phases of flight, like takeoff and landing. The decision by Leonard Skinner to use this aircraft was driven by necessity, with plans to upgrade to a Learjet following their tour stop in Baton Rouge. Artemis Pyle, the band's drummer, likened the old Convair to something that looked like it belonged to the Clampett family, underscoring the band's recognition of the plane's inadequate condition for their status as rock icons. This flight on October 20, 1977, was intended to be their final journey on the outdated Convair, marking a somber end to its service. In the days leading up to the tragic event, several alarming signs had emerged regarding the condition of the Leonard Skinner's aircraft. Most notably, Billy Powell and other passengers had observed flames shooting out of the plane's right engine during a flight just days before the crash. This was a clear indicator of severe mechanical issues, which were later confirmed by the National Transportation Safety Board. The NTSB's report cited an engine malfunction of undetermined nature in the right engine as a contributing factor to the crash. Additionally, it was noted that the starboard engine likely torched and burned more fuel than normal, exacerbating the situation by leading to fuel starvation. The concerns about the aircraft were not limited to mechanical issues. Artemis Pyle, the band's drummer, had highlighted in an interview that the fuel gauge on the older model plane was known to malfunction. Despite this, the pilots had neglected to check the fuel tanks manually before taking off. This oversight was critical as the flight later reported being low on fuel and urgently requested directions to the nearest airport. Cassie Gaines, one of the backup singers, had expressed such fear of flying in the Convair that she initially preferred traveling with the band's equipment truck. However, she was persuaded by Van Zant to board the plane on that fateful day. Another backup singer, Jojo Billingsley, was not on the plane due to health issues, but had eerily dreamed of the crash and had even tried to warn the band not to continue using the Convair. These troubling signs, ranging from visible engine malfunctions to ignored mechanical warnings and the intuitive fears of the band members, painted a grim picture of the aircraft's condition. Despite these warnings, the decision to proceed with the flight led to one of the most tragic events in rock history. As the fuel levels critically lowered, the pilots of Leonard Skinner's plane made a desperate attempt to reach Macomb Airport, situated approximately 10 miles northeast of where tragedy would soon unfold. Realizing they wouldn't make it, they aimed for an emergency landing in a nearby open field. Despite their efforts, the aircraft skimmed the treetops for about 100 yards before colliding with a large tree leading to catastrophic destruction near Gillsburg, Mississippi. The atmosphere inside the cockpit was tense. Early in the flight, vocalist Ronnie Van Zant, exhausted from the previous night, lay on the floor trying to rest, while others engaged in card games to pass the time. However, the mood shifted drastically when the passengers sensed something was amiss. Drummer Artemis Pyle, recalling the incident, described a harrowing scene where he entered the flight deck and saw the terror in Captain Walter McCreary's eyes, who urgently instructed him to strap in. The chaos escalated as the plane began its uncontrollable descent. Guitarist Gary Rossington remembered the terrifying sounds of the aircraft striking trees, likening it to the noise of hundreds of baseball bats hitting the fuselage. The impact was so severe that Rossington was knocked unconscious, later waking up on the ground, trapped under the plane's door. Amidst the turmoil, keyboardist Billy Powell experienced severe injuries with his nose nearly torn off as he suffered deep facial and leg lacerations.
His recount of the events highlighted the violent nature of the crash, noting that Ronnie Van Zant, who had not been wearing a seatbelt, was thrown from his seat and fatally injured upon impact with a tree as the plane disintegrated. The final moments in the cockpit were marked by a desperate struggle for survival and a profound sense of panic, leaving the band members and crew in a fight against time and fate. On the evening of October 20th, 1977, the Leonard Skinner Band faced a dire situation as their Convair CV-240 aircraft, chartered from L&J Company of Addison, Texas, tragically ran out of fuel and crashed into a wooded area near Gillsburg, Mississippi. The pilots, realizing the critical fuel shortage, had initially aimed for Macomb Airport, but were forced to attempt an emergency landing in an open field approximately 300 yards from the crash site. Despite their efforts to control the descent, at around 6.52 p.m., the aircraft skimmed the treetops for about 100 yards before violently colliding with a large tree, resulting in the aircraft breaking into pieces. The impact led to the immediate deaths of six individuals, including vocalist Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, backup vocalist Cassie Gaines, assistant road manager Dean Kilpatrick, and both pilots Walter McCreary and William John Gray. The aftermath of the crash presented a chaotic and grim scene. Rescuers faced significant challenges as they navigated a 20-foot-wide, waist-deep creek and fought through overgrown forest terrain. Rescue vehicles became stuck in the mud, complicating the efforts. Local residents played a crucial role, assisting the rescue officials by transporting injured victims to hospitals in the backs of pickup trucks. One resident recounted the surreal experience of finding survivors among the wreckage, tripping over another individual while moving around the debris-strewn site. The absence of fire, typically a beacon for rescuers, meant that locating the crash site in the dense woods was particularly difficult. A helicopter dispatched to the scene played a vital role by hovering above with a spotlight guiding the ground volunteers to the wreckage. This eerie illumination from above, combined with the concerted efforts of locals and medical staff, was instrumental in ensuring that 20 of the 26 passengers survived, albeit with serious injuries. The community's response highlighted a remarkable collective effort in the face of tragedy, with residents going as far as to use their personal resources, such as tractors and CB radios, to aid in the rescue and communication efforts. The rescue efforts were fraught with challenges. The dense thicket in the creek significantly hindered access to the site, leading authorities to employ bulldozers to clear a path from nearby Highway 568. This makeshift route was essential for moving the injured and for recovery operations, which lasted several hours. Complicating the rescue efforts was the behavior of some individuals who, drawn by the news of the crash, converged on the scene. An estimated 3,000 people arrived, and amidst the chaos, incidents of looting occurred. Valuables such as wallets, jewelry, and even parts of the crashed plane were stolen, adding to the distress of the situation. Despite these challenges, the community's response was largely one of solidarity and swift action. Residents not only facilitated the physical logistics of the rescue, but also engaged in directing traffic and relaying critical information via CB radios, demonstrating a commendable collective effort in the face of tragedy. The absence of fire due to the plane's lack of fuel prevented further casualties but made locating the wreckage more difficult. The spotlight from circling helicopters eventually guided rescuers who were haunted by the cries of the injured to the correct location. The initial medical response saw the lobby of Southwest Regional Medical Center in Macomb transformed into an emergency treatment center. Here, the survivors received immediate care for a range of severe injuries, highlighting the critical nature of the rescue and medical response efforts. The Leonard Skinner plane crash tragically resulted in the immediate loss of several key members and associates of the band. Lead singer Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, and his sister, backup vocalist Cassie Gaines, were among those who perished. Additionally, assistant road manager Dean Kilpatrick, pilot Walter McCreary, and co-pilot William Gray Jr. also lost their lives in the devastating crash. The impact of these losses was profoundly felt within the music community and left a lasting void in the band.
The survivors of the crash suffered severe and life-altering injuries. Keyboardist Billy Powell endured horrific injuries with his nose nearly torn off and deep lacerations to his face and right leg. Drummer Artemis Pyle, despite suffering multiple broken ribs, managed to leave the crash site and seek help, which was crucial in the rescue efforts. Guitarist Gary Rossington was found unconscious under the plane's door, having sustained multiple fractures to his arms, legs, wrists, ankles, and pelvis. Alan Collins, another guitarist, suffered two cracked vertebrae in his neck and severe damage to his right arm, which he refused to have amputated. His injuries had long-term consequences, leading to paralysis from the waist down years later due to a separate incident. Bassist Leon Wilkerson endured a double fracture to his left leg, a double compound fracture to his left arm, six broken ribs, and severe facial injuries, including the loss of 15 teeth. The severity of the injuries varied among the survivors, but each case required extensive medical attention and had lasting impacts on their lives and careers. The physical and emotional scars from the crash profoundly affected the survivors, shaping their personal and professional lives in the years that followed. The Leonard Skinner plane crash of October 20th, 1977, not only marked a tragic moment in the history of rock music, but also left a profound legacy that continues to resonate today. The crash sent shockwaves throughout the music industry, serving as a stark reminder of the unexpected risks involved in the pursuit of music. Leonard Skinner's distinctive Southern rock sound had resonated with audiences globally, and the loss of such talented musicians was a significant blow to the genre. Speculations about what might have been if the band had continued their ascent in the rock world are numerous. Experts suggest that Leonard Skinner could have evolved into one of the foundational American rock bands, potentially influencing the music scene as profoundly as groups like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers or Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. In remembrance of those lost and the survivors, a seven-ton black granite monument stands as a testament to the enduring impact of Leonard Skinner. Erected by Leonard Skinner Monument, Inc., this memorial ensures that the memories of the tragedy and the community's heroic response are not forgotten. Located near the crash site, the monument also celebrates the efforts of local residents from Amate and Pike counties who played crucial roles in the rescue operations. Personal stories from the community, like that of Connie Richardson and her family, who provided first-hand assistance and preserved invaluable historical materials from the crash, add a deeply human element to the remembrance. The site has become a pilgrimage destination for fans, survivors, and rescuers, featuring an oak tree adorned with symbols representing Leonard Skinner, thus keeping the legacy of the band and its members alive in the hearts of many. The tragedy of Leonard Skinner is a poignant chapter in the history of music, reminding us of the human costs of artistic pursuit and the communal bonds that tragedies can forge. The band's music continues to live on, a lasting tribute to their talent and resilience in the face of unimaginable adversity. The tragic plane crash on October 20th, 1977, that marred the journey of the iconic Southern rock band Leonard Skinner serves as a somber reminder of the unforeseen hazards inherent in the music industry and the fragility of life itself. Through a detailed exploration of the events leading up to, during, and following the catastrophic event, the narrative of Leonard Skinner's rise to fame, the terrifying moments of the crash, and the profound loss and legacy left in its wake have been intricately woven. The resilience of the surviving members and the band's enduring influence on rock music underscores the indomitable human spirit in the face of tragedy underscoring the impact of the band's music and legacy that resonates with fans across generations. In reflecting on the broader implications of this devastating event, it is evident that Leonard Skinner's story is more than a chapter in rock history. It is a testament to the power of community support and the lasting bonds formed through shared grief and perseverance. As the music of Leonard Skinner continues to inspire and the site of the crash remains a place of pilgrimage, the lives lost are honored and the spirit of the band lives on. 
The Leonard Skinner plane crash, while a moment of immeasurable loss, has also immortalized the band's contribution to music and culture, reinforcing the timeless nature of their work and the resilience of those who were touched by their legacy.